Welcome to our service on this, the second after Easter. This is a service of communion when we spiritually meet with our Lord in worship. And although we be apart in our homes, spiritually our Lord Jesus is with us. And spiritually we share communion with him and one another and the church throughout the world and down the ages. At the peace, there will be a moment to think of one another and all those that we wish were closer. At communion, when I give the words of invitation, you may wish to take elements of bread and wine where you are or pray. There will be a song then to help your thinking and prayer. As we begin, some words from today's scripture. On that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village named Emmaus. And when they later returned to Jerusalem, they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. Loving Lord Jesus, meet us now in our homes, in our hearts. Make them burn with your presence. So let us sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, 
and through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 14a and 36 to 41. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added to their number. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Apostle Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. On that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you were walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened and taken place in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how, how chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of, our, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it as just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and oh, how s slow of heart to believe, and all the prophets that had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? At the same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Journeys are about going places. Most of us are only allowed short walks at the moment, aren't we? Close by. Some of us need to be shielded and can't even do that. And we all look forward to the day when we can travel and see friends and family perhaps, holiday and maybe even make new friends. Journeys are about leaving and arriving somewhere else, about travelling and in a sense being in between. Journeys can be about change. We talk about life as a journey. And in our reading, two disciples are on a journey. It's perhaps a seven-mile journey. One is called Cleopas. So we see that they're not part of that inner group, the Twelve. 
Perhaps that's part of the situation that we're to understand. That these two relative outsiders need to become fully a part of the events of Easter. Here they are walking away from the place where everything had happened. They turned the back, their backs on the others and were mo making for somewhere else, Emmaus. And here when they're talking about the things that had happened to them, maybe the good times as well as the sad, Jesus comes close, walks alongside them, befriends them whilst they're walking away. He asks them what's the matter. It's funny, that's quite a common experience to find that Jesus is walking alongside us in those times when we're going the wrong way, when we've turned our backs on things, so to speak. He doesn't wait to be asked, but comes alongside quietly, discreetly, anonymously, and invites us to share our burden with him. We see from what they say that there was a sense of disappointment Jesus hadn't solved the problems that they wanted him to. He hadn't delivered Israel from the Romans. He hadn't brought that freedom. Perhaps they'd hoped he'd just sort, sort of click his fingers and make everything all right again. Some of us wish he'd do that with this virus. Perhaps they were new to the disciple band, because even though they speak of the experience of those who went to the tomb, that wasn't enough to keep them in Jerusalem with them. Perhaps they were returning to a former life which was familiar and simpler and safer. Jesus very graciously walks with them, away from everything, and listens to their fears and feelings, hopes and disappointments. And then after listening, when they felt that they shared their burden, someone else knew, understood. Then he began to explain the meaning of his life, because it's his life that will make sense of theirs. Jesus explains the scriptures. This isn't a dry Bible study. This is the good news of who Jesus is, what he's about. Jesus is the one who suffers so cruelly, so innocently, in order to bring the love of God to women and men and children. Cleopas and his friend must have felt that light was breaking into the darkness of their lives as they heard him, as they began to understand. Many of us are like Cleopas and his friend, making a journey of life, sometimes travelling in the wrong direction, trying to get away from problems and hurts. And Jesus the stranger comes close and understanding begins to dawn. And we know it's something very special that's happening. We just feel it inside. A strange warmth inside, like a fire in our hearts. I've known many testify to just such an experience of the closeness of Jesus in different situations saying things like, it was just as if I was on fire. I felt a warm glow come over me. I went all tingly. My tummy was all churned up. And yet that experience isn't quite enough. And here's the crunch. He appears to be going further. There seems to be more. And they wanted to stop now. A gut reaction, you might say, caused them to grab him plead with him to stay with them. Why? Because they didn't want to go anywhere else. It was getting dark. I wonder if they felt not only the lateness and the darkness drawing in at that moment, but also that if he were to leave them now, they'd come back another sort of darkness that his presence had begun to chase away from them. They still hadn't realised who this stranger was. He went in and had a meal with them, out there at Emmaus. You could say in the wrong place, Jesus went in to them and he shared the meal with them. He broke the bread, the sign of his body broken. And we're told that their eyes were opened. Now at last they recognised him. The one who died was alive.
Death did not have the last word, nor seen its final power. Understanding dawned on them as they walked the road and began to feel the presence of the Spirit in their lives. They'd opened their lives to him and invited him in. Now they knew the deeper presence of Jesus. Now they were able to turn around and return to Jerusalem. Cleopas and his friend met Jesus in the meal at Emmaus. They turned to him, invited him in, began to trust in God once more. Through that experience at Emmaus, they were enabled to return to the others, this time strengthened to face the problems that Jerusalem held. They had now truly found the freedom that they spoke about so mistakenly at the start of their journey. The experience of Cleopas and his friend is one that we can all share, that some of us have shared, and that comes back to us as we travel on. Today, Jesus will accompany us, each one, in each home, individually and together, and bring the dawning light of his resurrection love. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, be with us through all the chances and changes of our lives. Grant us confidence in your presence as we journey and help us to share our faith and trust with those we meet on the road. We ask this, Lord, that your kingdom might grow in our lives and we might see your new life being born in the hearts of those whose lives touch ours. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. To the bidding, you have given us good news. Please respond. Teach us to share it. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the message of Easter, for the assurance it brings of your triumph over death, the proof it offers that love will always have the last word. Yet alongside that message, there is another that perhaps we do not hear so often, a challenge which sometimes we can ignore, a call to action as well as to celebration. You have given us good news. Teach us to share it. Lord Jesus Christ, you appeared to your followers, demonstrating you had risen, and then you sent them out to proclaim your resurrection to all. You met with them and then called them to lead others to you. You gave them joy and then told them to share it. Easter was not for the few, but for all, not just for them, but for the whole world. You have given us good news. Teach us to share it. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us that so often we forget that. Having experienced your risen presence, we keep it to ourselves. Having met with you, we fail to introduce others to you in turn. Having received so much, we have shared so little. You have given us good news. Teach us to share it. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for those who have fulfilled your call. Those who first made the gospel known to us. Those who proclaim it to others. Those who sow, nurture and bring to fruition the seeds of faith. We pray for all you have specially gifted to proclaim the good news preachers and evangelists, ministers and missionaries, teachers and writers, may many meet with you through their labours and come to know you as their living Lord and Saviour. You have given us good news. Teach us to share it. Lord Jesus Christ, you call each one of us to be your witnesses, to tell others what we have experienced of your love to make known what you have done for us, 
to testify to the way you have changed our lives. Help us to do that faithfully, to play our part in your kingdom and purpose. And so through us may others come to meet you and know you for themselves. You have given us good news. Teach us to share it to your glory. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia, the peace of the risen Christ be always with you and also with you. Alleluia. Please use these moments to picture those you'd like to be near or share this time with. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, 
gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. So think about this communion we share now with one another and with Christ and all his saints down the ages.
living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So thank you for sharing this service with us today. And may God bless you and yours in the week ahead. Join us again next week when our service will have an all ages theme to it. And I think it's got sheep and shepherds in it too. God bless. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your day.